So before we start adding code to our application, let's just commit the current code base to a Git repository and get the init project thing in place. So first of all, I'll go to my GitHub repository account, which is for my YouTube channel. Create a new repository. We'll call it school. Management. A public repository. And that's about it. I don't need anything else. I'll just create it. Right now, a few commands that I need to run. Why don't I do git init over here and then git add? Add our init project commit message and then I'll just add the remote. Git push. And then it was what dash u origin master. So with this, if I now refresh, I would see my code base pushed to git. Okay, this is the URL and we have taken our first step. So now let's create the first entity which will be required by us for the school management, which is the student. So first I'll create the model php artisan make model student and I'll create all the necessary files that are required for that model to be supported. It will give me obviously the model, okay, the factory, the migration, the seeder, the request for store and update, the controller itself and the policy. The only thing which I don't need from this entire list would be inside database cedars I'll just get rid of this okay and that's about it rest i will you know i would like to manage why don't we go ahead and do that as well so the first thing is obviously i'll just close everything out and create student table let us add a few columns so i have added these migration fields to this particular file and let us also open up our model. I'll have fillable and add those fields. So we have name, student ID. Again, these are all you know, basically an assumptions on certain things. Not necessarily all applications should have this. You, know, you are free to create your own version of these things. But yeah. For the example, we, I'm going to use that. Certain fields which I have not added are things like the um, the class, the section, or the division because we are not there yet. Okay, fine. So our model is created, our migration is ready. I would ideally need the factory as well. So why don't we go inside factories, the student factory, and open up the student model move it to the right and let us quickly stop things up so name faker by the way i created two migration i mean a migration and model so i just you know went through the plugin setup so it becomes easy um, by the way, I'm talking about this particular plug plugin. I have recently started using it and I really love this. Um, what is it? Laravel idea. I'm still in my, I would say, trial period and I'm using it for some time and I'm pretty convinced that it is a very powerful plugin. It saves time. So I'll definitely buy this. Okay. Uh, gender I don't want. So let's go back to our factories. We have name student id so you see this is basically giving me those kinds of autocompletes which previously was not happening inside my php storm as well um student id right this faker maybe um random 
digit why not okay and then i have address one again if you would have seen it gets the autocomplete um, this is address street address i'll add this okay um, i can do this as address two and i'll have address one which is for now it's just the country okay that's about it and yeah pretty much done so we have this in place and why don't we go to the cedars and add a few students so student factory create come over here and i said right i have this habit of running the migrations again and again this is one such example so i'll go to my re database i have students and i have these which is fine a few of them are doctors wow uh, never mind but at least i have this in place and now that we have the data we would want filament to show us something right and that's where what we will need to do is create a filament resource so let's go to the documentation and come over here get started I just need the command so create a resource that's over here let's see it says php artisan make filament resource customer i'll do student and it will create a few files for me inside the app filament folder i have my student resource.php i have student resource slash pages and these three files as well and let's understand a few things about this resource file okay so i have the resource file in place you will see every resource extends the resource cl base class okay it has a lot of methods in it and i would highly recommend you slowly get used to the things which you can override because you know, this class is full of so many things for example the first thing that it kind of you know maps is which model this resource belongs to and we have said over here that it belongs to student class fine then here is one thing navigation icon hero icon or collection what's that well let us go inside our admin panel why don't i log in again right now, if you have created a policy, you will definitely come across this issue. What's that? Well, my policy is stopping me from making, you know, viewing these things. So I'll quickly come over here for now. I know it's a shortcut, but what we will do is add this to every method. Ideally we would want that only let's just say the admin department users are able to do certain kinds of stuff now i have a student crud you can see i have a few records as well but obviously they're not doing anything which is fine but this level of details are visible right and if you want so this is hero icons right so If I go to the website and start search for user, I have pa, 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 users. So why don't I add that inside my resource? I'll do users and hit refresh. Oops. Can you see the icon changed? So it's that simple. I just changed one property in the resource file and my UI has changed accordingly. Similarly, I said, right, the UI kit is very powerful. What if I want to show the name column? So I'll have text, pa, 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 text column, make, and this, if I do as name, come over here, can you see the name is visible, right? So without making too many i mean any view any major 
you know, code around the controllers and stuff like that, I have a listing page. I have a listing page where I can select how many records I want to see. I have a pagination in place and everything is pretty smooth, you know, SPA kind of a thing. And that's the beauty of Filament. It gives you so many things out of the box and you are still able to modify or control a lot of things based on your project requirements. And that's what really is the interesting part. Now, there are certain kinds of things which you know, obviously is there in the resource. For example, if I search for remove or navigation, um, there is should register navigation, right? So if I just for an, you know, just a random example, but if we don't want to show this as a menu item, okay, what we can do is the property name is should register navigation. So I can do dollar should register navigation. No, uh, yeah, that was a function. This is a value. So I'll just do false. And if I now refresh, the navigation is gone. So you can control these small, small things by making these property changes. That's the whole idea. So yeah, that's what I wanted to at a bare minimum level cover about the filaments resource class. There are a lot of things which we still need to do, but at the bare minimum, this is what it is. You can see there are three pages which came along with you know, the resource file. That's why these three things, the routes are slash, which means anything which is students will use the index route and there is a dedicated you know, pages list students, students thing. And there is a class which allows us to control the behavior of that particular class. Similarly, we have one class for the create page and similarly one we have for edit page. And we are going to control, modify the behavior of these pages as well. But in the next subsequent videos. So yeah, that's about it in this video. If you like this video, do click on the thumbs up icon and don't forget to subscribe to my channel.